We are back on Madden NFL 25 in our quest to continue this series of rebuilding the worst team on every Madden game. We're jumping around from era to era, from game to game, not going in any particular order, and I think it's kind of more fun that way. So back to Madden NFL 25. I did a fantasy draft on this game pretty recently. That video was interesting because I got to remember to save as often as possible. These don't save because I have to play offline. Servers are down. But we're going to go ahead and find the worst team on Madden 25 and rebuild them. If I have already done the same team around the same time, I might switch it up to the next closest team. But hopefully that's not a problem. Let's hop on Madden 25 and see who we have to deal with. So last time back on Madden 25 to celebrate the 25 years of Madden NFL, uh, we were looking at either being a coach or an owner, and someone dropped the awesome gem on me. I had no idea about this. That, that John Madden was actually a coach and not an owner. I don't know why they said that. It's true, but... <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> this came up with it uh, seemingly out of nowhere. But we'll do Vince Lombardi this time around. And let's see what the lowest overall team is. The Bills are a 75. That's probably going to be somebody that at least is in the conversation to be lowest overall. Raiders are also a 75. I think when we were back on Madden 25, I did the fantasy draft with the Raiders. I want to say that's true. So let's go ahead and do the Buffalo Bills. We have Jairus Bird, CJ Spiller, Mario Williams, Fred Jackson. Quite a range of players there. We get the youth at the top, the older players at the bottom of that top four. And I think we'll look to build around the top two guys and probably look to trade Mario Williams and Fred Jackson. I think so. And I don't know if you guys have seen this, heard about this, but uh, I'm actually pretty big on TikTok now. And I don't know, you guys watch the videos. I like to make what are commonly referred to as jokes sometimes, and I'll stretch some things out, I'll draw it out for what I would say to be comedic effect. And then people who watch me will post these on TikTok. I don't post on TikTok personally. I'd like to, because I know it would only... Uh, grow my channel, but I just don't have the time to make them. So if you want to do that, definitely let me know. And uh, Twitter would be the best spot to reach out if you can help me make TikToks. But uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll make these long jokes. They're kind of like crazy and I'll dig myself a hole and that's part of it. And then the whole comments will be like, bro's just talking. Like, yeah, that's kind of what this whole thing is. That's the video. That's kind of how this whole thing works. Imagine I just sat here in silence just forehead pressed on the screen rebuilding a team and just uploaded that yeah everyone would love that but it was bizarre this doesn't really happen so much anymore but i used to get complaints on my videos they're like you talk too much it's like that's that's the whole channel that's that's what this whole thing is it's like you don't have to have audio on you could mute the audio i mean imagine not being able to figure out where the mute button is or just turning your volume down uh, elite problem solving skills by the YouTube audience per usual, but let's go ahead and check out this team Manny Lawson is a guy I forgot all about, but there is some talent on this team We'll start with quarterback where it's rough The Bills thought drafting EJ Manuel in the first round would be a good idea This is like a pretty bad first round in general though. There were some good players of course uh, The standout was DeAndre Hopkins, but yeah EJ Manuel Was not a good choice for a first round pick However, in-game, he might end up being pretty good. Running backs is going to be C.J. Spiller and Fred Jackson. Probably will try to trade Fred Jackson, but I'm not sure what the value is going to be at 32 years old. We got my guy, Tashard Choice, hook him horns, and I know what you're saying. He went to Georgia Tech. What are you talking about? He is the running backs coach at Texas. He does a heck of a job. Love me some Tashard Choice. Duran Dickerson is in here. Remember him now, and Frank Summers, who I don't remember. At receiver, we got Stevie Johnson, probably one of the more underrated receivers of the 2010s. Just gets no love, and he was a pretty solid player. Just played on some bad teams. It really didn't do a great job of getting him the football, but he was good. Brad Smith, uh, he's most remembered for being crushed by Patrick Willis. That's a fun uh, clip to look up. Young rookie Robert Woods. Who knew how good he was going to be? My guy, Flash Goodwin. Hook'em Horns, Marquise Goodwin, Derek Rogers, Chris Hogan out of Monmouth. Shout out New Jersey, Monmouth County, my uh, home county. Tight end, we got Scott Chandler. Lee Smith is really just a blocking tight end. Uh, a lot of tight ends here. 
Not a great group. Cordy Glenn is good, though. And Chris Harrison's good. I might move Chris Harrison to right tackle if I can. And just rock out with two young starting offensive tackles. And that should be pretty good. We'll be able to develop both of those guys. So left tackle's fine. Left guard, Sam Young. Not great. Not a great group. Center should be Eric Wood. Doug Ligurski, David Snow, Garrison Sanborn. Right guard's Craig Urbic. Not amazing. And then right tackle, of course, will be Chris Hairston. Probably will try to trade Eric Pierce as he's older. Left end's Mario Williams, who was a pretty good player. Number one overall pick. Probably didn't exactly live up to that hype. But did end up being quite good with the Bills, too, as well. Of course, was the number one overall pick by the Texans. I don't want Mario Williams, the Oklahoma, now USC receiver. But yeah, with the Bills at 28 years old. So this season would put up 13 sacks, 14 and a half the next season. Honestly, if I could, I would edit Mario Williams to be a lot better because he should be. But I don't think that's a thing you can do on this game. And it's not. But he should be a lot better. Kyle Williams is only a 62 overall because of the scheme fit, I want to say. Because he's a defensive tackle. So it just looks bizarre. But he should be way better. Alan Branch could play too. But Kyle Williams should be way better than a 62. I think it's scheme fit. There's Marcel Darius. But I think we changed uh, the right end to 4-3 run stopper. I think his overall is going to go up a lot. Marcel Darius. Former top 10 pick. Pretty good. Terrell Troop. Uh, Jerry Hughes. Just came over from the Colts around this time. And ended up being very good with the Bills. However... Not so great at this time. Nigel Bradham, pretty good player, and Young too. I believe, correct me if I'm wrong here, I believe he was arrested on gun charges not too long ago and then was out of the league. Arthur Motes, we have Rookie of the Year for this year, Kiko Alonso, only a 68 overall at this time. Right outside linebacker, Manny Lawson. I might try to trade him too because he's 29. Corners, we have young Stefan Gilmore, would end up being one of the best corners in the league. Leotis McKelvin. Ron Brooks, Justin Rogers, Kresdon Butler, TJ Heath. Free safety, of course, is Jairus Bird. Aaron Williams, hook him horns. And then strong safety is Duke Williams and Nora Searcy. Remember him? Kyle Williams up to a 74 overall. Still not great, but if that improves his trade value even the slightest bit, which it won't, no one's going to want him, but it would have been nice. Oh, Brett Kiesel. He was a pretty legendary stealer that I feel like most people... Do not remember, but let's go ahead and try to make some trades. I mean, free agency could have a decent player or two in here. Kerry Rhodes is a 93 over. Quinton Michael. Okay, there's some value in here. We could bring back some legendary bills. Willis McGahee to KO Spikes. Randy Moss. All right, there's value here for sure. I'm going to sign that. Why would I not? Nate Clements, another Buffalo Bills. A lot of Buffalo Bills players in here. There's some decent players on the trade block. Like, Doug Baldwin's not good yet, but could be. But I'm looking at the age of a lot of these guys, and it definitely makes sense to try and get some of these guys and develop them. Like, Trevor Robinson, for example. Like that could be a starting center, for sure. And, I mean, David Deal would be pretty good for a year. Bruce Campbell is a big... Uh, Super athletic player, kind of busted out of the league. Maybe a seventh round pick. All right, we'll be able to get something done, I think. What about a fifth? I'm not going to use that anyway. This should go through. Okay, so instead what I can do, instead of offering a pick, is I can just give them a player I don't want. It's not going to be Eric Wood, but we could do a center swap. Maybe Doug Ligurski, and maybe I can trade Eric Wood. They don't want Doug Ligurski. It's a mistake. All right, Doug Ligurski and a fifth gets us... I don't even remember who we traded for. Trevor Robinson, that's right. Don't really remember him much in the league, so... It is what it is. I and mean, it's not like we can move him to left guard. Game doesn't work like that, but I can try and work some things out. Piers, on the, he's just not going to have value is the thing. I'm finding it very difficult to trade on this game, and I'll show you why. Manny Lawson, for example, red interest. Go to the Steelers, for example. Red interest, right? Go to the Seahawks, back to the Steelers. Oh, uh, it's green interest. Go to the Texans, back to the Steelers. It's red interest. I have no idea which players have interest and which players do not. I have 
no way of gauging it. So I think what I have to do is just add some of these guys to the trade block and see who's interested. That's it. So I brought in some of these players like Nate Clements, like Quentin Michael, and I moved Kerry Rhodes over to strong safety, where his overall is worse, but I think he's going to be better. Didn't pick up Takeo Spikes or Willis McGahee, but I've added some of these guys to the trade block that I don't really envision as being a big part of the team going forward because they're too old or whatever. So we'll go ahead and advance the week. See my offers. Hopefully there are quite a few. And we can go ahead and flip some of these players for picks that we can later turn into better players. And we're freeing up money while we do so as well, despite losing money when signing some of these guys. So we do have offers here. Quentin Michael, Manny Lawson, Eric Pierce, and Kerry Rhodes. Might end up keeping Kerry Rhodes or Eric, or not Eric Pierce, Kerry Rhodes or um, Quentin Michael just because we need a starter at strong safety. But there are some decent offers in here. The players, it's like, you know, not much. But a second round pick from the Raiders, I think is enough to get me to move Kerry Rhodes. So I'll hold on to that. Might come back to it. The Raiders are offering a third for Quentin Michael. Oh, man. <laughs> I'm seeing some players I haven't seen in a minute, which would make sense. But as you can see, we're not exactly getting awesome trade value. But I guess I'll take Eddie Royal for Eric Pierce. Uh, Eddie Royal is good, not great. Used to love Eddie Royal on the Broncos, but probably a little past his prime here. And Manny Lawson should have awesome value, but really doesn't, unfortunately. I'll take a second round pick from Pittsburgh. The best way to get better is to get younger. So that's what we have to do. And uh, where's this Raiders pick? Give me this second rounder. That should be basically a first round pick. And again, I'm not sure how much of a value that trading is going to have for me. You know, maybe I'll just trade Quentin Michael too and try to set ourselves up. Because we have Denora Cersei. We can start at strong safety. We need to. If the Raiders are still offering a third, I'm just going to take it. But, uh, how is this sorted? Just randomly, I think. We'll take the third round pick from Oakland. And we will simulate. Jason Worlds is on the trade block. Jason Worlds was a pretty good young and up-and-coming player who quit football to become a Jehovah's Witness, which if that's what you're into, that's that's fine. But how old is he at this point? If he's in his mid-20s, which he should be, I'm interested. 25, let's do it. That's my Manny Lawson replacement, and I think I'm going to be pretty happy with that. And, you know, it is interesting to see some of these guys, like Chris Culliver, for example, just get added to the trade block when they were not there at the start of the year, which I guess is kind of how things would go. It's preseason. You know, they're making some cuts. Maybe there are some surprise roster makes. They need to make some space on the roster otherwise. So, you know, this is realistic to see different guys than you would see at the start of preseason on the, uh, on the trade block here. But I think we could get something done. Eric Wood should have value, and I'd really like to get, like, Alden Smith, but I don't think that's going to happen. If I can somehow get a first-round pick out of this, this trade will not go through. But if I can offer, like, I don't know, a second and swap with that, uh, that first there, that would be nice. Oh, I have second-round picks in 2015, not this year, from the Raiders. Okay. All right. Okay, there it is. Eric Wood, a third-round pick. We get Chris Culliver and a first. That's a bad trade for the 49ers. What about a fourth for Jason Worlds? Accept it. Okay, this is going pretty well. The trade block seems to be my best friend so far. Gotta work through the trade block. Everson Griffin before he got good. You know, Corey White's actually interesting here. He's only 23 years old. He's a 79 overall. Now, if I can just swap like Ron Brooks for Corey White and a seventh... Like, this is a big upgrade. Well, I guess it'd be Ron Brooks in a seventh for Corey White. They don't want to do that. I have no mid-round picks, but I'm totally fine with that. They don't really seem to want to trade Corey White easily for somebody on the trade block. What about a fifth? Okay, we might be able to do it for a future four. And it's accepted. There we go. Getting younger, getting better. I'm trying so hard to make a trade, but Brad Smith and Leotis McKelvin have absolutely no value. I'll end up probably holding on to Leotis McKelvin, but Brad Smith, 
I think he's gonna get cut. Finally, to the start of week one. I hit start record an hour and 15 minutes ago. That's how long some of this stuff takes on some of the older school games. But as you can see, our offense is ranked 30th. Our defense going into the year is ranked third. Could be a very, very weird year for this team. We are already a higher offense and defensive overall than we were when we started, obviously. It was 75. However, I don't know if I expect huge things from this team. So, I think Season 1 is just going to have a lot of simulating. And then, going into Season 2, free agency, the draft, that's where hopefully things start to take off. Is this the Ben Bones draft class? It's not. DeAnthony Baltimore? That's one of the best names I've ever seen. Not a great start so far, 1 and 2. But this is going to be a progress, or a process. <laughs> but we're progressing. I am already finding some decent draft prospects, though. I like Trayvon Bland out of Ohio State. A man coverage. And I think Bobby Attaway from FIU, a little Florida international love. Bobby Attaway, middle linebacker, 6'4", 240. Looks pretty good as well. The rare Dartmouth. Ivy League action, Isaac Gunter. Interesting. Dartmouth, huh? Okay. What is it? Cheyenne Winkenwerder? <laughs> That's a name. I would say Corey Stone looks pretty good, by the way. I would say he looks pretty solid. 6'7", 318. Big boy out of Virginia. So, we talked about this in my Madden 25 video before, but this is back when they combined players' faces. Um... And that's how they would make the actual pictures, which in some ways is kind of cool. But these are already existing draft classes. You get the same ones over and over again. And like they're only a finite number that they can create. So it is kind of cool, but it's also weird. I think I prefer how it is now, but it's, it is cool to, to go and go back. But every time I see these guys, I'm trying to recognize them. But it's kind of difficult because it's two different players combined. However, DeAnthony Baltimore is at least half Antoine Bethay. I recognize that. And DeAnthony Baltimore looks pretty good as well. So just to show you guys, where is Antoine Bethay at this time? I would guess with Cardinals? Yeah, or Colts. So he's on the Colts at this time. But I would say that's definitely at least half Antoine Bethay. Jesse Bible? He's going to put the power of the Lord in you? The power of Christ is going to keep you away from the quarterback, brother. Jesse Bible. Oh, love that. Edivaldo Ashanti. That's Ray Rice. That's half Ray Rice. It's kind of like a fun mini game to figure out who some of these guys are. And yeah, Ray Rice not exactly aging the best. Hopefully there's no storyline with that draft prospect where he beats the hell out of his wife in an elevator, but... Ray Rice was a 92 overall at this time. Yeesh. Oh, Al Foos from Georgetown. 6'6", 236. Bring your lunch pail to work type guy. Yeah, you let him date your daughter. I'm interested. A spectacular catch? That's all I need to see. Not exactly a high quality picture here, but Delray Taimani definitely looks familiar as well. All these guys are going to look familiar for the most part. It's just about trying to figure out who it might be from, you know, closing in on 10 years ago now at this point. Like, what, eight? Arion Stackhouse from Cal Northridge. And they got the schools from all over. I want to say this is probably Jermaine Gresham, at least half. It looks like Jermaine Gresham to me. Got a cannon. Fairly accurate. I wish we had a more straight-on angle. Not just Jermaine Gresham, just cheese and just off to the side. But no, I, I think that's Jermaine Gresham. Jarisburg ready to negotiate a new contract, and obviously this is someone we want to bring back. Pretty affordable contract as well. Uh, I would definitely be willing to pay him what he wants, which is basically just this contract, plain and simple. And he should remain a Buffalo Bill. I would say he's one of the best players on the team and should be for the entire rebuild, really. And he's accepted the offer and will be coming back for the long haul. We're 6-5 and five right now. Offense and defense are both ranked inside the top 10. Kind of don't get that, but I guess it bodes well for the future for sure. Corey Stone with star development, but I'm not sure we're going to be in position to draft him. 
Jason Worlds is up to an 86 overall. Do I want Scott Chandler back? He's an 85 now. He would be like, what, 29? So I don't really know about that one. But Worlds I for sure want back. We are 9-6 and six and actually have a better record than the Patriots. And our team is actually not even that good right now. We are certainly overperforming, which I guess is a good thing. Usually winning is good. Scott Chandler, 28 years old. Just like so hesitant to offer him an extension. And we are actually into the wild card round of the playoffs. Nine and seven. How do we do so well? I just don't get it. EJ Manuel, I guess, was decent enough. Nate Clements was fine. So many tackles back in this, this era. Michael Johnson with the Bengals had 17 sacks. My man D. Wash, 187 tackles. Every time we go back to these older Maddens, I got to talk about Daryl Washington. He was just so, so good and so underrated. Sherm with seven picks. But then he got into some off-the-field stuff and just never played. But he was so good. Peyton Manning goes over 5,000 yards. Marshawn Lynch, nearly 2,000 rushing yards. And Wes Welker, was he on the Broncos at this time? I guess he would have been, right? Has nearly 2,000 receiving yards from Peyton Manning. I mean, these are ridiculous numbers. Yep, he was. Demarius Thomas, RIP. He was another beast. Like, Demarius Thomas was probably better than anyone remembers. And look at Peyton Manning with 19 interceptions this season. Demarius Thomas, again, like, so unfortunate that he had passed away so early. Um, like, just in December of 2021. But get this, this line. From 2012 to 2014, the lowest amount of yards he had in a season was 1,430. And 10 touchdowns was the lowest amount the year before. And then... He had 1,300 yards in 2015, just outside that range. So, he had a four-year stretch of 5,787 yards. That's a 17-game average of over 1,500 with 107 catches per 17 games and 11 touchdowns per 17 games. Just an insane stretch. Very, very good prime. One of the fastest players in the league. Of course famous for that big uh, slant basically taken to the house or skinny post. I can't remember exactly what it was uh, with Tim Tebow in the playoffs. And uh, dude, if you can make Tim Tebow look like a great quarterback in, in the pros, you're doing all right. CJ Spiller was our offense over 1600 yards, 6.1 yards per carry and 14 touchdowns. What a year. Stevie Johnson was great. Didn't find the end zone much, but great season overall. 91 catches for 1,300 yards. Got Zebra over there. Uh, defensively, we've kind of seen these numbers. Need to get a little bit more pressure on the quarterback. Worlds and Hughes, each posting decent sack numbers. But our defense seems to be built for a 3-4. Yet, we have Mario Williams that we cannot move from defensive end. So, we're kind of stuck in that regard, unfortunately. But we've made it to the playoffs which is surprising for the lowest overall team in the league at this point. Yeah, we made some changes. Uh, definitely abused free agency a little bit. Made some good trades, I thought. I'm happy with the way things are going so far. It's just, even though we won the division in year one, it's only going to be downhill from here. That's just how these things work. Did we win? Mm, I don't think so. <laughs> All these uh, things coming up are really giving me... The, or at least the appearance of a loss. Let's go ahead and confirm that, though. Postseason, 33-30 to 30 loss. Yikes. Very close game. But this was a really good Season 1. Overperformed. And I'm stoked about where we are. Is Mike Ditka coming back to coaching? No way. <laughs> this is part of what made Madden 25 crazy. I mean, with the Ben Bones draft class, they basically had Barry, or not Barry Sanders, basically had Bo Jackson. And now, like, Mike Shanahan's retired. Mike Ditka's coming back. And, oh, man, rules violation means top Colossus Stone, top LT. What's his name? I already forgot. Corey Stone, Colossus Stone will miss Virginia's bowl game. All right, sputtered out. This is not good for someone with star development. 
And Star Development was the top development at the time here in, in Madden 25. So I'm curious as to whether that's going to be changed or not. Because that does not bode well. Now, we probably wouldn't be in position to draft him anyway. But you never want to see a, a really good potential player that you could, you could grab now not looking so good. We'll have to see if his development is still star. I don't know if it would change. I don't know if they had this back then. But we'll find out. Mike Ditko's the new head coach of the Giants. I'm in. No, I'm not. That'd be that'd be horrible. But um, just, what a story that would be. Anyway, the uh, the Super Bowl is being hosted at MetLife. That's interesting. Broncos and 49ers. And out of nowhere, senior Florida State corner Leon Sandcastle, who played two snaps in his college career, is ready for the combine. Leon Sandcastle? I don't know if you guys remember, around this time they had Deion Sanders as Leon Sandcastle. That's Deion Sanders. So in the same way that you had the Bo Jackson class with Ben Bones like we talked about and like I featured in my Madden 25 fantasy draft video, Leon Sandcastle is Deion Sanders, another Easter egg of the Madden 25 draft classes. I think that's really rare though. How lucky did I get to get the Leon Sandcastle draft to pull up? Where is he? All the way at the bottom, there he is. Leon Sandcastle, does he look familiar? Yeah, probably looks a little bit like Deion Sanders. Corner, Florida State, Productions 1, didn't play at all. But I mean, surely this is Dion. F strength, I guess that makes sense. But A speed, A acceleration, A agility, A man, A zone, F press. Come on, man. I guess that really wasn't his game. But yeah, I would say this player looks pretty good. <laughs> I mean, this is ridiculous. And Ben Bones is definitely sick, but this is like the best draft prospect of all time. I mean, surely... Oh, can you not even sort for dev trait? Oh, it's over here. Yeah, surely it's gonna be star. No high motor, come on, Dion. Personality is a 99, obviously. As charismatic as they come. F tackle, that makes sense. Now, I don't even need to see any other players in the draft. 95 man coming out? Yeah, that's pretty good. We gotta figure out a way to draft Leon Sandcastle and it feels like we might not even need to. We might not even need to figure out a way to draft him because Leon Sandcastle might not even get drafted. All right, do we want to re-sign Terrell Troop and Alan Branch? Probably not. Scott Chandler's still interested, but he didn't like my first offer. Duran Dickerson's up to an 86 overall. Nate Clements has regressed substantially, so probably will pass on him. Do I want Scott Chandler? I don't really. Doren Dickerson I will take, though. I do, I'll take... Mm, okay, might have to rephrase that. Honestly, because we have so much money right now, 30 mil, which is a lot more at this time, I would like to lowball Scott Chandler and give him at least like, you know, less years for a little bit more money. I don't really want to give him a, a super long-term contract. He's not interested, so I can just franchise tag him. Let's take it back for one year. Free agents, Devin Hester, Michael Rue, Sean Lee. Uh, okay, we have some decisions to make. Now, Devin Hester would just be cool to have, but he's like not a 94 overall receiver. But is he being valued like one? He's a return man. But is he just a 94 overall receiver in this game? He was never really a good receiver at all. Despite being so, so, so fast. But I don't like... With that play in simulation, we can't even see his numbers because he's a free agent. So I gotta figure out what we want here. Like, there's definitely some good players. There's a lot of good players. Jacoby Jones, I guess he just valued return men at a very very high level in this game but i wonder how they would perform as like an actual receiver the thing that i'm going to do now is figure out what positions i want to try and upgrade ej Manuel's a 92 overall now i mean i guess quarterback's not going to be a need clearly so we could use a receiver 
for sure. Stevie Johnson and Eddie Royal are good. I could use a better one. Scott Chandler is fine for this year. Cordy Glenn looks like he's going to be fine. Could maybe use a left guard. I think center's fine. Could maybe use a right guard. Did I say left or... I don't know. Uh, right tackle's fine, but, but left or right guard. Mario Williams, we could use an upgrade at defense event. Really both spots. Marcel Darius is a beast. We got to beef up the D-line for sure. Nigel Bradham is great. Arthur Motes is good. Jason Worlds is fine. And then corner, like Chris Culliver and Stefan Gilmore are a good duo. And especially with Leon Sandcastle, we're going to have a really good group of three. Jarris Bird is obviously really good. And then Duke Williams is actually kind of fine. But we could use an upgrade at, at safety. Pick a 22 and 32. So let's focus first on... Potential upgrades. So, I'm happy to see that there are really none at linebacker. All the defensive tackles are so old for the most part. Linval Joseph, maybe. Like, Terrence Cody's there, but I think Linval Joseph, who nobody really has any interest in, would be pretty good. Antonio Smith, Robert Ayers. Don't really want anybody in here. Hopefully there's some good left ends. Justin Tuck. I mean, Greg Hardy be good but he's just like such a piece of shit in real life that i don't i don't really want to carlos dunlap doesn't really fit the scheme at all but is good that's the thing it's like we got to value guys that would potentially fit the scheme so justin tuck i would give him like a two-year contract and really amp up the money he's probably not gonna have any interest in this but it's so much money that maybe he would. Carlos Dunlap could just slide over to the other side of the line, though. Good, young at this point in time. Trending up. It's kind of the type of player you'd want to look uh, look at getting. Ooh, Chris Snee, Vladimir Dukas. But John Asamoa is very, very good here. Definitely want John Asamoa. Would start instantly. We got Linval Joseph. That's good. Wait, so does Corey Stone still have star dev? Says he still does. Clifton Bolton, ace speed. It's pretty good. Still only Linval Joseph at this moment. Now, where are we on John Asamoah and Justin Tuck? I think we're still in the lead on all these guys. I think it's supposed to be on the right. You'd think they would show that, make it a little bit more intuitive, but I don't, I don't know. So what if we change the salary to like... 1 million. Now, that, I would say, if that updates, I don't know. We'll just, we'll figure it out. Ryan Kerrigan on the trade block? Probably needs a haircut, but <laughs> just make myself sound as old as possible. Hey, he needs a haircut. But, this is someone I would want to get. Now, we did get John Asamoa. We got Justin Tuck. And we got Carlos Dunlap. So, the need for Ryan Kerrigan, I will say, is at an all-time low. But what if I gave them Mario Williams? They're not going to accept that. It's going to have to be for a uh, like a, a pretty good pick. They've accepted another offer? No. Say it ain't so. Surely it's not. Surely he's just still on the trade block. Tim Tebow's here. Okay. Steven Ridley was pretty good before he started fumbling all the time, and <laughs> Bill Belichick basically made sure he never played another snap in the league. Glenn Dorsey. Major draft bust. Yeah, he's just gone. So I would say that was kind of a missed opportunity, but on the other hand, we didn't really need him that bad. Okay, NFL draft time. Brown's on the clock. We're going to go ahead and pause that, and we'll see what happens. Corey Stone did drop down to nine but is now projected to be the number one overall pick. I might end up trading down from where we are. We're at 22 and then 32. And I would like more picks because there are some players I like in the middle of the draft. So I think what we'll do here is just, I mean, maybe I'll try to get a first round pick a little bit higher up the board, like Tampa Bay, maybe 15. Now, we don't need a quarterback, but there is a quarterback I like in, in the mid-rounds. I might take just to take in case EJ Manuel doesn't work out. Could use a backup running back. Receiver's definitely on the on my mind. Tight end, too, because we have Scott Chandler franchise tagged. I think tackle's going to be okay. 
But we could get another offensive lineman in here. But I, I like what we have going on. Could use a defensive lineman for sure, even though we do have some pretty good depth, but we don't know how good like Justin Tuck's going to be and for how long. Could use a linebacker. Like, we have some decent talent here. Obviously, you're going to draft Leon Sandcastle uh, probably in round two, just because we have a second round pick, and then not much after that. want to make sure we get him. And then Duke Williams, like, we maybe could use a safety, but we don't really have a lot of mid-round picks, so I will uh, try to change that. Okay, trading a first next year and a third next year. Because we have a bunch of picks next year, I think the way I'm going to do this is just use those picks to uh, to move up. So I'm excited about that. I'm going to get mid-round picks by trading mid-round picks next year. And I mean, we should be where? Number 15, is it? I think I just traded for Tampa's pick. We'll move past number one. See who goes number one overall. You probably can hear the audio on it now. Because they used to do that. It is a quarterback. TR Stewart. Didn't hear any audio on it. Next pick is Wade Hancock. It's a little laggy right now. Might have to save this in case it tries to freeze on me. I mean, it basically just pops up with Adam Schefter, but he doesn't actually say anything the way he does on Madden 15. So that's a little bizarre. And now here's Adam there goes Corey Stone. Now he's talking now. Corey Colossus Stone. See, it definitely was cool, but the fact that it's the same draft classes every time, like the same rotation of, you know, 10 or however many it is, that I don't love. I mean, did I trade for a first next year? Did I screw up? Because I don't see it. No, I do. It's just not popping up yet, I guess. All right, it's a second round pick next year and a sixth this year for a second round pick. Number 35 overall from Jacksonville this year. All right, trading a second and a third next year for a second and a third this year. I'm also trading Arthur Most, as you can see at the bottom of your screen there. There's a middle linebacker I like a little bit more in this draft, and I sure would like to draft him instead. So that's just kind of the logic behind that. But we have a lot of picks now. I just think this draft class is going to be really, really good from the guys that I have scouted. So I just plan on drafting them. All right, so we are at 15. Um, Trayvon Bland is off the board. I probably would have drafted him. And there goes DeAnthony Baltimore at six. I probably would have drafted Trayvon Bland in this draft class if not for Leon Sandcastle entering. So that is definitely really awesome for us. Really, really cool to see that in the draft as well. Again, I think the odds of getting that have to be I mean, fairly slim. And I think Edivaldo Ashanti sticks out to me quite a lot. So I think that's who we're going to take. He is a tight end out of Mississippi State, 6'6", 247. It's kind of annoying that you can't see, like, the combine stuff at this time. But um, I'm pretty happy with the player I scouted. So Edivaldo Ashanti, tight end out of Mississippi State, will be our first pick of the draft. I think I'm going to try and trade this pick down. Um, and we got to remember, this is the 2014 draft. I would like mid-round picks back for this, but that's not any of the offers that we're getting. So we're going to have to do something manually. Uh, EJ manually. <laughs> Imagine I laugh like that. Imagine I thought that was funny. I don't know which would be worse, actually. So multiple second round picks. One of those is earmarked for Leon Sandcastle for sure. I think I'm going to try and get an elite pass rusher with this pick. Like, we got Justin Tuck, right? Von Miller, I cannot move to... Um, defensive end, but he'd be sick at outside linebacker. Don't think there's any way I'll be able to trade for him. I really want a big time, like, true defensive end, and that doesn't mean I won't draft one either, but I think I want a big defensive end. Also, getting Calvin Johnson would be just so sick. Is there any way I can get him? Probably not. They seem to have interest in Chandler and Tuck. I like that. I still don't think we're going to be able to do it. <laughs> the Raiders signed uh, Devin Hester because, of course, they did. The most Raiders player of all time, Devin Hester. Brian Arakpo is listed at defensive end. I need Brian Arakpo. What can I do to get Brian Arakpo? That's what this new game has become. Actually, nothing because of his contract. He is unacquirable. Hook him horns. 
That's why I want Brian Arakpo so bad. One of my favorite players for sure. But I just don't see a ton of great defensive ends I can pick up. What if I gave Justin Tuck back to the Giants? I actually thought that was going to go through. I mean, should I add in another first? Nope, not really going to be able to get JPP either. Now, I think Cam Jordan could be the one. They don't want Justin Tuck. Could they want Jerry Hughes? I would take this. I would do this all day. Better positional upgrade. What about a fifth? I don't. I think when this better positional upgrade thing pops up, it's like they just don't care what else you throw. They just want a player that isn't Jerry Hughes. I don't think I can. I can get a player with this pick, unfortunately. Okay, making a big time trade. It is, and I, I really wish there was a way to show it, but I don't know how close I am usually. I'm trading a first rounder number 22, a second rounder next year, a fifth rounder next year, for a first next year and a second and a third this year. So a lot of action, a lot of moving around, but I think it was for the best. There goes Cheyenne Winkenwerder. Isaac Gunter, I probably uh, would have considered drafting for sure. Kansas City offering a first round swap for number 32. I mean, I think I have to take this. So it means we don't spend a pick here, but I was really wor uh, more worried about the mid round guys anyway than the first rounders. The only guy I kind of wanted was the, well, see, Dale Power looked pretty good too, uh, but I, I already have Leon Sandcastle in my mind, but I really wanted Isaac Gunter. He was just not supposed to go in round one. I guess with the recent Madden, I'm kind of surprised to see guys go in a, you know, not in the order they're supposed to, which it's better this way for sure, but uh, I wouldn't have traded down from 22, but we got a first round pick next year anyway. We can trade those for players and uh, better players for sure. So Leon uh, Sandcastle is projected to go middle of the third round now. I am not going to let it go that far. I want Leon Sandcastle desperately. So we'll go ahead and, and raise the audio here so you guys can see what Chapter's saying. One of the most saying. fascinating draft stories ever. Corner Leon Sandcastle came out of nowhere to take the world by storm this offseason. Referred to by one Trey Wingo as an ugly clone of Deion Sanders, Sandcastle's 4-240 amazed scouts, and his confidence was epic as he told scouts, I can play DB, RB, QB, TE, and even a little R&B. Every team was curious, but this club took a chance and pulled the trigger to bring in Sandcastle. Can his CB skills live up to the hype? Time will tell. So there you have it. Yeah, Leon Sandcastle was a big thing in Ultimate Team at this time as well. And with the NFL Draft, he was a, a guy that had a card at every single position, which was kind of cool uh, back in the day. But um, I think he's probably in Madden 13 as well. Maybe it's just Madden 25. I don't exactly remember. But um, yeah, I mean, I had to get Leon Sandcastle. That was a no-brainer. And the 4240 sounds pretty good. As we'll take our pick not too far after that. So I'm going to go with Clifton Bolton here at Arkansas State. We looked at him, liked him a lot, and we need outside linebacker a little bit. So we'll take him, and I'm probably going to come back and take a middle linebacker later. Next up going, Aluzi's Broussard out of Culver Stockton. I mean, we got some schools here. We got Wake, okay, ACC school. Robert Morris, Whitworth, I don't even know what that is, honestly. Northwest Oklahoma State which I think that's a baseball to go. I think someone big went there. But I will go with the Culver Stockton. Aluzi's Broussard looked really good. So happy to go with him. And I need to check to make sure um, that we have all the picks we need for the guys I want. So we have a two and a three remaining. Or did I just take one? No, yeah, I, th I think so. It's so tough to keep track of these. All right, better here. So we have a, we have a, t a second round pick and a third round pick remaining. I definitely want a receiver and a middle linebacker still on the board. So we should be able to get both of those guys. We'll go with Trenton Peaks out of the Citadel. Definitely liked what I saw in the uh, pre-draft scouting process. So we'll take him. And the Citadel, the what a school. And I also really like Bobby Attaway at FIU as well. We checked him out pretty early in the scouting process. And we do need another linebacker. So I think Bobby Attaway will be the guy. You can say fun things like, Attaboy, Attaway. It's not that fun, but it, it's, it's 
better than the alternative. This dude's name is Soma Moon. Okay. This outside linebacker that the Giants drafted, Bolaji, with two eyes, by the way, Bolaji Ofori, is like if uh, somebody combined BJ Ojolari's name and just like scramble the letters around. And it does fit that it's a Giants outside linebacker. Just trying to see uh, some of the guys. Arian Stackhouse was the guy I looked at. We don't need a, uh, a quarterback, though, obviously. So I was okay with letting him go and letting him get drafted. So really, one of the only guys I have left is Erman Patterson here. Safety out of Eastern Washington. Go ahead, now take him. Oh, does game. he have a story? He does. This season, Eastern Washington safety Erman Patterson was convinced he knew something the scouts didn't that he was NFL ready. After convincing some scouts to attend his pro day, he got a little buzz that earned him a few individual workouts. He Not impressed bad. in the workouts and rose enough on several draft boards to be taken here. The small school questions are still out there, but if Tony Romo can do it, why can't Patterson? Okay, you gotta need to... <laughs> gotta compare a free safety from what, Eastern Washington? to a quarterback from Eastern Illinois. Is he Eastern Illinois? Maybe he's Northern. No, Tony Romo is Eastern Illinois. I was right the first time. Uh, kind of a bizarre comparison, but okay. So I have no one left scouted, so we're in a bit of a rough spot. Here's Demetrius Bujari out of Fordham. Another kind of like if you combined Ojolari or BJ Ojolari. LSU defensive end, but his brother Aziz is on the Giants. Hopefully it wasn't too lost in translation there. Um, but uh, Demetrius Bujari at a Fordham still could use defensive end help. We'll go ahead and take him. All right, rookie signings. Hopefully we did pretty well. I feel like we did. I mean, we had a lot of these guys pretty heavily scouted, so I'm thinking we did okay. And Leon Sandcastle, I'm really intrigued to see. Uh, our second pick at the top of the second round. But let's go ahead and see overalls. 80 overall for Edivaldo Ashan. Oh, yeah. Keep in mind, overalls are a little bit different at this time. But 90 overall for Leon Sandcastle. 75 for Clifton Bolton. Illusi's Broussard's only a 61. But that could be scheme-based. 79 for Trenton Peaks. 80 for Bobby Attaway. Ermond Patterson's only a 63. 75 for Demetrius Bujari. And 66 for Jarrell Cornell. But I would say this is pretty good overall, and we could try and change the schemes around to get the highest overalls for each of our players. But I'm really most interested in Leon Sandcastle at a 90. 95 ball carrier vision, 99 agility, 99 acceleration, 83 catching, 97 elusiveness, 99 juke, 94 jumping, 95 man coverage, 99 personality, only 50 press, but 65 pursuit. Even got some route running. 88 spectacular catch. 99 speed. 92 spin. Where's man and zone here? Or we saw a man, but zone coverage is a 90. Yeah, he's pretty good coming out of the draft. Let's see what overall this left end is that I wanted. Isaac Gunter is a 23-year-old, 82 overall left end. Honestly, I would just straight up swap Justin Tuck if I can. Says they still need a left end. What's with the overall jump? I didn't change anything yet. Justin Tuck's just now a 90. What if I gave you Mario Williams? No interest in this. What about a D tackle? Aluzi's Broussard's only a 61. Is it just scheme related? What if I gave them Linval Joseph? There's no interest. I In this game, there's no interest if they're not just one of the top guys. The overalls are honestly all over the place compared to where they were last season. Like, there's zero consistency. And look at Leon Sandcastle, though. That's crazy. I'd give you, uh, Corey White. Nope. What about a two next year? Nope. They don't even have interest in Marcel Darius? How is that possible? I will give you a first-round pick. You're kidding me. And Kevin Cobb. All right. They drive a hard bargain. I said bargain really weird. I, like, I'm from the Midwest. They drive a hard bargain. Uh, what about a first and a second? Is this too much? Maybe it is. I'll just pass. He must have a really good dev trade if they don't want to trade him for anything. Darren McFadden's here. Desmond Bishop is an 86 overall. Dustin Keller. 
Akeem Nix, Giants legend. There's some good players in here, actually. Let me get Darren McFadden. It'd be a pretty good backup to have. Probably won't get injured in in uh, simulation with no injuries. Also, I have Demetrius Bujari now. I maybe don't even need that defensive end. He's definitely better. I'm not arguing that point. So what is his style? Balanced as opposed to run stopper? Maybe that's what it is. All right, cleared up enough space to sign Darren McFadden. Just have to clear a little bit of space. Put some guys in the trade block. Still interested in making moves. Also, I feel like it's kind of rough. No one's going to remember just how sick Darren McFadden was. Not nobody, but Darren McFadden was so sick, especially at Arkansas. He and Felix Jones, and I think actually uh, Peyton Hillis was in that backfield as well. Awesome player. Injuries completely destroyed his career. Unfortunate to see. Mario Williams, by the way, 86 overall at right end. It's pretty good. Clifton Bolton is an 80 overall at left outside linebacker. Good fit. All right, new overalls. Asamoa goes up to a 96. CJ Spiller about the same. Mario Williams up to a 93 as a 3-4 versatile. And in this game, all it is is you change the scheme to whatever it says. So one cut, I made half back to one cut. And Chris Harrison's up to an 89. Stevie Johnson, 88. Leon Sandcastle down from a 90 to an 87. Maybe I'll go back to prototype. Cordy Glenn up. Uh, most of these are about Car Kyle Williams up to an 86. That's more like it. Carlos Dunlap up to an 86. This is more like it. Now, Marcel Darius went down. I could change that. Did it change the other D tackle? See, it makes him an 80. At balanced. Maybe I prefer to change that back, though. I think I might. But the defensive end, I mean, this is night and day. Although Justin Tuck went down and Demetrius Bujari went down. So maybe I'll change that back. Peaks goes up to an 81 though, even though Eddie Royal went down. I would say overall, this was good. I can just change the other ones. I just forget what Justin Tuck was. I'm going to find out what Justin Tuck is because 79, we're, we're not going in the right direction. Although Sandcastle's back to a 90. All right, 90 overall speed rusher, even though it doesn't match what it, it says he is. That's fine. I'll take that. Team looks excellent. I'm going to keep Marcel Darius as an 83 instead of an 88 because I prefer Luzi's Broussard to be an 80 as opposed to a 61 or whatever it was. I think at tight end, I'd rather start at Evaldo Ashanti instead of Scott Chandler, so I'll make that change, and then we'll simulate. 3-0 and in preseason. Now, I want to say that some of the best teams of all time have not performed well in preseason. And some of the worst teams of all time have crushed preseason, so I'm not sure what we can do about it. Good start, though. Only team in the AFC East to win a game. 1-0. 2-0. Ooh, this is a decent season so far. If we beat the 0-2 Jets, we're going to be cruising. 3-0. Big hitters count here. One more pitch till it's a walk. A little baseball reference for you. Watching the tail end of the Yankees game as we speak. It's 4-2. Bottom of the ninth, Garrett Cole had a no-hitter through most of this game. And uh, Yankees would end up blowing it, kind of, making it 2-2. Took the lead in the top of the inning. I don't, you, most of you don't care. But, um, yeah, uh, Rays have runners on first and second with one out, down by two. <laughs> and we had a bye week in week four? That's a little early. It's the earliest possible one you can have. Things may have changed with the 17 game schedule, but it used to be that way at least. Oh, low strikes out. Let's go, Wandy Peralta, baby. You have no reference for what I'm talking about. 4-0. Are we going to have a perfect season here? It's going to be a short video. Probably not because it's this game. But uh, this is pretty good so far. And we won't go undefeated. 4-1, and one, unfortunately. We are 8-1, and one, though. Joe Hayden, big extension to remain in Cleveland. Joe Hayden was so good in his prime. Uh, we'll try to beat the Broncos here. True test. They're 7-2. Definitely a really good team. If we can beat this Broncos team, I have high hopes. And we did not win. 8-2. Okay. 12-3. I mean, we will be making the playoffs. There's Arthur Blank. We will be making the playoffs either way here. There are some expiring contracts as well. 
Ooh, and some big ones. Some really big ones. Zach Brown is on the team. Listed at running back. That clearly must be broken. I don't remember a Zach Brown at running back. I mean, this is size of a running back, but it's got the picture of Zach Brown, the linebacker. I don't remember who this guy is. EJ Manuel up to a 94 overall. I mean, the overalls are looking really, really good. And this team has been very successful. Jairus Bird's kind of moving all over the place in terms of overall. But I would say overall, I keep saying the word overall, but overall, we've been more successful than not. Bobby Attaway is an 89 overall as a rookie. I mean, Nigel Bradham's great too, but we needed two inside linebackers, so we've been great so far. So I've been offering some contracts. I think I got the top guys taken care of. But we'll wait until the offseason for the rest. I think I'll do one more season after this. We've been really successful, but I do want to do one more draft. Big time contracts accepted. Everyone that I wanted, really. All starters, too. But we are doing quite well. And look at EJ Manuel winning Offensive Player of the Year for the AFC. We went 12-4. and four. Great season. Leon Sandcastle had four picks. Mario Williams put up double-digit sacks. CJ Spiller, over 1,600 rushing yards. Stevie Johnson was great, too. Peyton Manning, once again, goes over 5,000 yards. And this time, Wes Welker goes over 2,000 yards. Adrian Peterson smashes, shatters the rushing record, goes for 2,200. Dante Grimm puts up 19 sacks. That was a draft pick in literally the last draft we did. A Crow with 10 picks. Steven Tullock, nearly 200 tackles. Dante Grimm, though. 19 sacks. EJ Manuel was fantastic, as was CJ Spiller, although uh, less yards per carry than last year. Stevie Johnson was still really the only receiver who got any looks on this team, and he had 15 touchdowns. Quite different than the two from just a season ago. Quarterback sacks, we have 10 from Mario Williams, 9 from Jerry Hughes, 7 from Darius, 5 for Tuck. Pretty good all around, I would say. Didn't get a ton of interceptions, but we had a few. Kirk Cousins. Oh, I, I thought this was touchdowns. <laughs> I thought he had 40 touchdowns to two picks. No, he had 40 yards and two touchdowns. A little bit different. And it actually doesn't even come up here in sacks. Sweet. Oh, there he is with the Bucks. 19 sacks. 91 overall rookie. It's pretty good. Browns in the divisional. We are an 89 offense, 88 defense. But I've had the team get auto-progress, so we don't really have any XP to spend. Did we lose? Oh, you gotta be kidding me. 25-17. Alright, well, we'll do one more season. Devin Stovall's certainly looking pretty good. Dev trait is star as well. Okay. Defensive tackle with A finesse moves, A strength, B speed. I like that. Ooh, Manessa Oliver, A block shed, A finesse moves with B speed. Oh, cornerback, Shane Hayduke from Washington State. I don't think so. I don't want Shane playing corner for me. Or or Connor, or Hunter, or Skyler. <laughs> I don't want those guys. I want someone who can run. I'll give Darren McFadden a four-year extension. That's probably a pretty bad decision, but I'm okay with it. My punter is not interested in re-signing. I will franchise tag you. You don't have a decision. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and cut Leotis McKelvin. It's not really a point to have him anymore. We do get a penalty of two million, but it's gonna free up some stuff right now. So, I think it's worth it. All right, we'll franchise tag the punter. He looks stoked to be back. That's what it is. All right, free agency. We have pretty much no money because we went big last season. Uh, there are some good players in here. Brian Cushing, Cam Newton, Des Bryant, Demarius Thomas. Nobody's offering Demarius Thomas. I will. Kenny Phillips, Justin Houston. I mean, this is a decent free agent class. I really wish I had money to offer on some of these guys. Wes Welker is just the best of all time in this. He's literally put up 4,000 yards in the last two seasons. <laughs> That's a, just insane. I will trade Justin Tuck for literally anything at this point. Anything. If they give me a seventh round pick, I will do it. If they give me a fifth, I'll take it. So we only signed him to a two-year deal, so there's not really a lot of dead cap associated with that. That clears up some room to offer Demarius Thomas. Now, we're going to have to bid lower on him, but I think there's a chance we can get Demarius Thomas. I really do. Oh, we got Demarius Thomas. Six years, 57. 
we are good to go now. That is an excellent acquisition, obviously. Stevie Johnson, Demarius Thomas, and the receiver we drafted this past season. Our receiving core is now set. Our offense should be exceptional. Our tight end is developing, Edivaldo Ashanti, 85 overall in year one here, or end of year one. And then Carlos Dunlap can slide back over to left end from right end, and we'll make the scheme fit so that he, not de-tackle. Make the, okay, that's interesting. So I guess I kind of didn't know about this. In the off season, I guess you can change guys across different position groups. So Kyle Williams could move to defensive tackle where he would be a good fit, but uh, he's still a good fit at 3-4 uh, at defensive end, which is kind of where he is now. But I'm actually really liking the way the team looks. So I wonder if you can move outside linebackers to defensive end. My bet is you probably can't, even though you should be able to. Let's see here. You can. Oh. This changes things. Jerry Hughes is a 91 overall right outside linebacker. Like that. Three first round picks and I can't get Von Miller. Unrealistic. He's on the bills in real life. Two first round picks doesn't even get me Brian Arakpo. How do you trade in this game? Torian Taimani, definitely half John Beeson. Looks not good. This guy Ryan Garrett doesn't look bad for a third round quarterback. We don't really need a QB, but still. The thing is, I feel like we don't really need anything. Our team's just really good right now. Oh, a little Patrick Levingston action. No K in Patrick. There's potential here. You usually don't see the A speed at safety in uh, in these drafts. He looks all right. So we got a lot of XP. What's his dev trait? There it is. Fast. Hey, that's pretty good. NFL draft time 2015 going into the final season here. I'd love a Super Bowl win. I think that's that's fair to say. We pick at number 14 in the draft. Um, well, I looked at a lot of these guys. Devin Stovall would have been cool. Manessa Oliver I definitely liked. Keon Williams I think I liked. It's just... I don't really feel like drafting anybody because... The team's already great. We're just like, I don't know, maybe a missing piece away. The draft really is not going to be great for us right now. Strong safety looks pretty good. Free safety is good. Corner is obviously good. We don't have a lot of great depth at some of these positions. That's fair. Linebacker looks really good overall. I like defensive tackle. I like our defensive ends. Although all we have to do to get Carlos Dunlap's overall up is change the scheme. My offensive line is definitely really, really good. Can't really find any flaws there. I like receiver. It's like, what do we do? And now Carlos Dunlap's up to an 85. So it's like that really isn't even a position of need. I don't know what we would do here. Matt Elam is a 90 overall here. Well, God dang. There's not really an upgrade uh, at strong safety that I can see, like not anything significant. I don't know what to do here. Uh, I'm just going to draft somebody. We'll go with Keon Williams. Defensive Keon tackle. Williams now off the he seemed like he was okay. Does he have a story about him? He, he actually does. Moved up a few draft boards after a breakout performance at the Senior All-Star Game. And senior followed one? that up by running a solid 40 time at the Combine. He's considered a great team guy, a jokester in the locker room, but the knock is he's just not that athletic. Not that yeah. athletic. That didn't stop this team from grabbing him here, though. They think he can be a disruptor in the middle, which is exactly what they need. So you're telling me he had a great senior bowl performance, tested well at the combine. He just said that. Probably would have taken Pat Todd, by the way. Um, but he's not a great athlete, but he tested well at the combine? It doesn't really feel like that matches up very well. Go the backup quarterback. Give me Ryan Garrett. What more can you tell us about Ooh, we got a story. Senior Ryan Garrett was a relative unknown when he was announced as the starter for Oregon State and went on to be considered the sleeper quarterback of this draft. Known for his strong arm and accuracy, Garrett's Oregon State team may have only finished 4 and 8, but scouts were in a weak receiving corpse for the record. He showed his stuff at the senior All-Star game and a strong pro day saw him surge up several draft boards. 
Some teams felt like taking Garrett here was a reach, but this team's confident he won't just be an NFL starter, but he'll be shining bright on the big stage. Well, he's not going to be an NFL starter. Also, it's not receiving corpse. It's receiving core. I hope I, I, I thought I heard him say corpse. It is spelled C-O-R-P-S. You got me there. That's pronounced core. If you didn't know, I know a lot of people, they'll write out receiving core, C-O-R-E. That's not how that is. It's core, but C-O-R-P-S, like the Marine Corps. We'll just go with the top tight end, Ralston Perotti out of Newberry. Newberry, is that in Newberry, Mass? Probably. Rookie signings, Keon Williams is a 78, and Ryan Garrett is an 83. Not a great rest of the draft, but a fantastic top two picks. We see the whole NFL. Why can we not? He won Corbett from App State, 78 overall. Not going to check out everybody. I'm just not. Evan Mathis on the trade block. Now, is it worth going after him? I don't really think we need to. We have John Asamoah and Craig Urbic. I would say we should be fine. It's like a slight upgrade on Craig Urbic, but I would say that's probably inconsequential. So I'm happy with where our team is. I think we're going to be very solid this season. Like, high expectations based off the regular season last year. But we need to do better in the playoffs. Can't be one and done. No way. Saints got Wes Welker. <laughs> uh, what a career for Wes Welker. Yeah, he was on the Chargers and Dolphins at the beginning of his career. But he goes from Tom Brady to Peyton Manning and now Drew Brees. Literally the three best quarterbacks of the 2000s and 2010s. 2010s, I guess, like, maybe more Aaron Rodgers, but best quarterbacks from, like, 2005 to 2013 range for sure. I mean, Peyton Manning, you know you know what I'm talking about. I'm not going to defend it too much. Trade offers for Linval Joseph. I don't know that I would be willing to accept any of these, but the fact that I have offers makes me think that he at least has some trade value. So maybe I can try and flip him in a trade. Although, I, I doubt it because trading in this game is I mean, seemingly impossible, really. The thing is, though, is Linval Joseph is so far down my defensive tackle depth chart at the moment that I really don't need him. But I can't trade him. He's no trade value other than in the trade block. So I'll trade him for a third round pick. Now... What is the actual goal of that? I don't actually know. Because it's not like I'm going to use that third round pick to get a better player. I'm not sure. Trading it just does not work on this game. Is how it is. It does not work. I would say that the team is looking really good though. EJ Manuel's a 90. Wild. CJ Spiller, Derek McFadden looked like a really good one-two punch. Duran Dickerson, of course. Ever Seabury of Demarius Thomas, Stevie Johnson, and Trenton Peaks, who we drafted, who seems to be quite good. Edivaldo Ashanti out of Mississippi State is getting quite good. We don't have a lot of good depth at tight end, but we've got a good number one. Cordy Glenn is certainly good. John Asimo is one of the best offensive linemen in the league now. Trevor Robinson is fine. Craig Urbic is fine. Chris Hairston's getting really, really good. And then on the defensive line, Carlos Dunlap is quite good. We have good depth, too. Mario Williams is a 94 now. Seems a lot more like it. Defensive tackle, we have Marcel Darius, Illusius Broussard, and Keon Williams, along with Kyle Williams. So it's a really good group on the D-line. And Clifton Bolton at outside linebacker is quite good, I would say, with Nigel Bradham and Bobby Attaway, who both do play in the 3-4, of course. So that looks good. Jerry Hughes is also very good and our corners are spectacular Corey white chris culliver stefan gilmore and of course lehan sandcastle the best one of the bunch now the only real problem is that our fifth corner is our starting strong safety i'm a little bit worried about that we also have ermon patterson we drafted to who's not that great and there's duke williams uh, behind jerry Bird. so what i might do is sign any decent looking corner in free agency or trade for one, I guess, but I'm not sure if I'll be able to. Oh man, Tremaine Brock. It's He was decent in that 49ers Super Bowl run, but that is a name I have not seen in for 
ever. There are a lot of names that you just completely forget about. DRC would actually be really good. He's the third corner on the Broncos and would be an instant upgrade. So we would exceed the salary cap if we do that. So we can, can we shed some salary here? All right, I added in Dustin Hopkins and I signed another kicker. So it's a first and a second round pick for DRC. And that is a really, really good addition. Really good fourth corner. It's going to be nearly impossible to throw the ball on us because our secondary is so elite. I'll also make DRC the backup strong safety in case that comes up. But look at this cornerback group. Leon Sandcastle, Stefan Gilmore, Chris Culliver, DRC, and then Corey White is our fifth. That is an exceptional group. I'm perfectly fine with where our team is. I think this should be a really, really competitive team. I would say Super Bowl bound, but you never know. But uh, yeah, we had an upgraded kicker, and then we lost our old kicker to get DRC. I think that's uh, definitely worth it. See, these are some of the stories that it'd be so easy to see if somebody was good or not. Cornerback Davian Scott is an athletic corner who ran track at Florida before joining the football team. Like, he's going to be a monster. Oh, and if you have the name Speedy, Purdue tight end Speedy Bales, not only is he a Big Ten tight end, his name's Speedy, I, he's going to be a monster. As we start the season 0-0-1, we tied in week one? Well, we could still go undefeated, technically. And we still are undefeated. 3-0-1 atop the AFC East. Things are going really, really well, and it's a nice change to actually win in simulation. I like that. Our first loss of the season finally comes for 7-1-1, but that's a really good start to the season. Niners are 9-1. We are 8-1. This is a big-time game because of what it means for the playoffs. Now, I get it, it's an NFC team, we're an AFC team, we won't run into them in the playoffs unless it's a Super Bowl, but it's a good test to see how good we are against the rest of what the best of the league has to offer. So I'm curious as to where we're gonna be after this. I'd love to see 9-1-1. Call 9-1-1, because this team is dangerous. It would've been nice if it changed to 9-1-1 there, but it, it's still 8-1-1. It's a slow load, there it is, 9-1-1. I, can, well, I probably shouldn't scream that. The heck, that's bad. All right, we'll move forward. I don't need someone uh, calling the police. The Broncos are 1-12-0. And, and Tamiko Ryan's not headed back to the Eagles' big move. Now, I want to check out the Broncos real quick. I think they lost Wes Welker, right? Yeah, Wes Welker is now on the Saints. Did they lose Peyton Manning as well? They must have, right? Yes, their new quarterback is... Keegan DeLeon, it looks like a combo of Miles Austin. Remember the Cowboys receiver out of Monmouth? Shout out Monmouth County, New Jersey again. Uh, and somebody else. Also, Mario Williams has 16 sacks right now. That's a big time performance. Although we are not to the end of the NFL season, but that is a uh, pretty good performance, I would say. 10-2-1, a lot of football left. That's not entirely true, but a few games. 13, two and one. That is a very good season. And Jimmy Johnson gives up fishing. <laughs> Comes out of retirement to continue his coach career. Does not look like Jimmy Johnson. Like maybe if he was made out of clay. Aaron Rodgers gets MVP. Uh, and let's see here. Mario Williams gets 20 sacks. Carlos Dunlap at 13. EJ Manuel and CJ Spiller, both top five in yards at their respective positions. And Aaron Rodgers is a beast. Adrian Peterson continues to dominate over 1,900 yards again. Calvin Johnson was great. And then look at that. Mario Williams, 20 sacks. Alteron Werner and Kyle Arrington, both with seven. I'm curious to see where we are within like our actual team. Like I want to see where... I, like the receivers are because we don't get to see those. I want to see the interceptions. I'm hoping that we have, you know, some a thousand yard receivers and we do. Demarius Thomas, what a season. 105 catches for 14, nearly 1500 yards and 16 touchdowns. Stevie Johnson, nine touchdowns over 1100 yards on 90 catches. Edivaldo Ashanti, I think was quite good. Trenton Peaks really didn't do too much, but our top two receivers just dominated. And then Leon Sandcastle. I'm hoping for big things. Five picks. We'll take that. Jerry's Bird with three. Chris Culliver with two. Although, I saw, look at a 
Marcel Darius, nine sacks. But Bobby Attaway, middle linebacker, puts up seven sacks. 121 tackles and a pick. This is a great season. Clifton Bolton was good too. Five sacks, two picks. Even Demetrius Bujari played a little bit. These are really, really good numbers overall. I'm stoked with where the team is. I mean, this is this is just great. Our, our divisional game is against the 8-8 eight eight Cleveland Browns. We're 91 offense, 90 defense. I just want to make sure we don't have any players to progress, which we probably don't because they spend most of the XP anyway. So as you can see, we can't even afford anything, which is good. It keeps our team good. Now, I think I could do more meaningful upgrades, but everyone seems to be pretty good right now. So not going to mess with it. Going to hop in and Super Sim, Divisional, hopefully then the Conference Championship and then the Super Bowl. We are an 88 overall, 90 off, or 91 offense, 90 defense, 88 overall. Interesting. Uh, and the Browns are an 82. We should be able to win here. Oh, it is snowing. But I like that, like, it actually feels like a snow environment, right? Like, in current games, I mean, it's just like the snow's got a little bit of, or the field's got a little bit of snow on it. But here, it's like, there's snow on the side. There's snow like up to the uh, the sideline and and the wall, and it feels cold. It's like the temperature uh, on the camera's been turned down. It's like more blue is what that means. And the outside of the stadium was completely covered in snow. I mean, this is just way better. It, like it feels like the environment that you expect it to feel like. Now, I will say, the quality of the uh, actual gameplay isn't great. But keep in mind that this is so many years ago. Is we had Vince Lombardi. That's my head coach. I forgot. Um, this is made back. This is Madden 25, so 2014. So that means this game came out in 2013. So, yeah, this game is uh, quite old. As maybe we'll play out a drive before super simming. We got Trent Peaks. And look at him break a tackle. He saw daylight. That could have been a touchdown. But a big 26-yard gain nonetheless. Let's get C.J. Spiller a touch in here. Oh, we got decent blockers out in front. Spiller's got the speed. C.J. Spiller down the sideline, falling forward inside the five. 48-yard run from C.J. Spiller. That's why you get a speed back. He dominated at Clemson. He's been a dominant back thus far in the NFL for us. And this could help us win our first playoff game of the video. Darren McFadden into the game. We'll work off play action. Rolling out, throwing, finding Edivaldo Ashanti. Touchdown. That will put us on the board first. Maybe we'll see the defense. I kind of want to see Leon Sandcastle out there a little bit. But that drive was too easy. And for some reason, Edivaldo Ashanti is listed as a captain. I guess he's just come into the locker room and completely changed things. He's a young tight end. and the, uh, Whoa. Young tight end. This, is, this sounds like a category. Well... Hold on. But our offense seems unstoppable so far. And our defense has done the job. Only allowing 10 points here into the second half. It's 21-10. But that could be changing very quickly. Got to capitalize on our opportunities. But it's 28-13. Browns will score. And we should be able to ice it here. 35-16. Too little too late for the Browns. And that is your final. 35-23. And we are advancing to the conference championship. Ooh, the 12-4 Ravens in the conference championship. That feels like a dangerous matchup. Eagles and Seahawks on the other side. And this is a really good Ravens team. Number four offense is worse than ours. Number eight defense is also worse than ours. One and four, respectively. They're also an 88 overall, though. This could be a challenge. I think maybe we'll start with Super Sim and jump in if I have to for this one. Another snow game. Okay, this this is football here. They say you're playoff football. Joe Flacco? Oh my. Only up 6 nothing. I think we missed the extra point. Is that a joke? Ravens up by 1. That's going to extend to 4 now. We get a field goal, and they're up by 1, but then it's going to extend even more. It's 24-9. to nine. We get the ball to start half, though. This might be a good drive to play. Oh my goodness, CJ Spiller. And the game's frozen, just like the weather. All right, that was a really bizarre, super long run. 
Seems like running the ball could be overpowered with a 94 overall running back in CJ Spiller. That's got to be a touchdown. Oh! Okay. Well, here's what happened. I play a lot on the uh, uh, PlayStation. That's not even allowed anymore. You can't even dunk the football thanks to Jimmy Graham. Uh, I tried to throw it to X, which I did. Ended up being a touchdown at Evaldo Ashanti. But in my head, X is the bottom button, like it is on PlayStation. So I hit the bottom button and threw it to A, which ended up being the tight end, who was wide open for a touchdown. So we'll take it. Oh my goodness, the Ravens are backed up to their own four. Finally, we see Attaway in the game. This is a close game, 24-16. This is big right now. Vontae Leach going to take it for four. Ravens, six for nine on third down so far. Nice. We're going to assume this is a run here. Well, we're on Vontae Leach with Jerry's Bird, so we got to try and shoot this gap. Diving! And we're going to sack Joe Flacco with Jerry's Bird. That is a big-time play by the playmaker at the back end of our secondary, playing up near the line of scrimmage, diving at Joe Flacco and wrestling him down. That is a huge play. We'll get back on offense, and a touchdown and a two-point conversion will tie this game. All right, so it's third and 16. This drive has not gone well. At what point do we just streak Demarius Thomas and figure it out? That's a good throw, though. That makes it fourth and two. And I think we should go for it. I really do. It's two yards. We have C.J. Spiller. If we just get a toss going, can anyone on the Ravens match his speed? Especially if we show that we're strong to the right side of the formation. It's just going to be a foot race. And C.J. Spiller... Is not going to win it. I mean, that's unbelievable. Haloti Nada can race him down. The Ravens did punt, though. We're going to streak Demarius Thomas. We need him to win off the line. He's getting safety help. I mean, I, God dang. Demarius Thomas won off the line. EJ Manuel, please don't underthrow it. God, you suck. Okay, 27 and 19. Four minutes to play. We need big things here. Ashanti, please catch it. This dude has actual brick hands. It's like the third pass he's dropped this game. And Graham drops it. Can anybody catch the ball? I feel like I'm making the right throw. And we're just routinely dropping the ball at every single opportunity. That's wide open. Up the seam. It's Greg! My name Greg. That's not what it is, but that, that's, that feels good. I'm old Greg. Oh, I'm sacked. Good read over the middle, Stevie Johnson. And there's a two minute warning. We need a two point conversion, so I'm trying to score as quickly as possible. Run up the middle, CJ Spiller touchdown. Okay, that's what we needed. We're still in it. I mean, we've got to run the ball here. Spiller up the middle. T okay, two point conversion. It's 27 all, just didn't want to risk it. And uh, we'll go to Super Sim and see if the uh, defense can get a stop. Off to a decent start. Joe Flacco sacked. It's third and 17. And Ray Rice gets a nine-yard gain, and they should punt it. And we are starting from the 33. We have just under a minute and a half to get into field goal range. I would say that's quite doable. As Ashanti will break a tackle. Ooh, and of all to Ashanti. I mean, if he wants to get the football and, and just run, that's cool. I feel like if he has to make a catch in traffic, it's not cool. He's not going to do it. But if we, we just need to find ways to get him the ball in space. I kind of want to throw it to him. I'm going to do it. Oh, my God. Ashanti working back to the football. Okay. This could be game. Third and six. Okay, well, everyone's incredibly fast. Anyway, it's fourth and five. All we need to do, I say all we need to do, is hit a field goal to win. I didn't like that last angle. I mean, we should be able to drill this and leave 10 seconds on the clock and, and win it, I would say. There is a lot of wind going on, and I was always notoriously bad at this. Notoriously bad. But we'll see if I can drill it. think I drilled it. Not a lot of wind for 12 miles per hour, by the way. That thing didn't even move. We go up 30 to 27. We're going to squib kick to take some time off the clock. They have no timeouts. We don't want to return, obviously. That was, that was fielded way too well for a squib kick. Oh, Joe Flacco's going to get sacked. 
I think it was Mario Williams. No, it was Carlos Dunlap. It was number 97 who got there. But that'll do it for the conference championship. And we are finally headed to the Super Bowl. You guys ready for rebuilding the worst team on John Baden football from 1990? I don't think that's possible. I don't, I don't, when did franchise mode first get implemented? I have no idea. And it's going to be a Bills, Seahawks, Super Bowl. I'm ready to go here. I'm excited about it. They had the number 12 offense, number 12 defense. They snuck in here. They're bad. I don't know if that's true. But I do think we can beat this team. I really do. Because we beat the Ravens. Struggled through it. Seahawks are an 86. I'm sure you're going to see some of the usual suspects. Russell Wilson, Earl Thomas, Cam Chancellor, Richard Sherman. They might even have Cliff Averill at this time. They might have other guys. Brandon Browner, Byron Maxwell. They're going to have at least another one of those corners. Why is it not snowing? Yes, I know it's Tampa, Florida. I know that's where I used to live. And it, it never snowed while I was there. I lived there for a short time. Who is this random Hall of Famer? I don't know, and I certainly don't want to guess. Seahawks have won the toss. We see Russell Wilson. There's our guy, EJ Manuel. And they're going to receive. That's not a great decision. They have, oh yeah, that's who we tried to draft. Gunter. Looks pretty good. Bobby Wagner, who's really young. Bruce Irvin. Sidney Rice is on this team. Brandon Meebane. Man, they got everybody. We're up 7 0, though. This is a pretty decent start. Now 14 0. Legion of Boom not exactly doing much. They finally get on the board with a touch. They probably have Marshawn Lynch, too. We didn't mention him. But it is 20 7 now into the second half. 28 7. 35 7. Seahawks are barely even putting up a fight. Let's jump in here. Our buddy Grags in motion. Thought the safety was going to blitz, but he won't, and that's nearly an interception. You'll notice that back in these games, and even still today, you could have a receiver that's wide open, and your, uh, your quarterback will not even put the ball close to where you want it to be and let the DB or linebacker make a play on the ball. Now, that's supposed to change for Madden 23. We'll see how good or usable that is. Oh, KJ Wright as well. Oh, Spiller with speed. CJ Spiller, how are we getting tackled there? Howard. Howard is not a name I remember. So, I think there's a decent chance he's a made-up player, but he could be somebody that I just don't remember. But how is CJ Spiller getting caught? Oh, look at the moves, though. CJ Spiller down to the goal line. I mean, we might as well just run the ball here. Spiller. Touchdown. I mean... Easy as that. Just give the ball to CJ Spiller, and we'd probably never lose a game again. Except for on the toss where we got caught. But other than that... All right, let's see our defense. Oh, yeah, they have Percy Harvin as well. He was a big signing by the Seahawks. It's kind of, like, forgotten about, I would say, overall. But uh, we'll just try to make a stop and end this game. Throw it underneath, you coward! Around the edge, out of way, big pressure. I love that animation. The dip and rip underneath. I know it's a linebacker, right? An inside linebacker, but check out this move. It's like, we, at least I don't know that we've seen an animation like this in recent history ever. Like, dip underneath, basically rip through. We don't, we don't get like an actual dip and rip, but we get the dip animation then around the pocket to the QB. Like, I love that. And they're going to punt. Oh, they're done. Game's over. Oh, Kiko Alonso. Remember that he was on this team? And we talked about that at the start of the video. That hit CJ Spiller. Okay, you don't have to fall on that. Get up. All right. Horrible. But, uh, yeah. Kiko Alonso, we just really couldn't use him because he wasn't good at the start of the year. And that's where these, uh, these rosters are from. So, a little bit unfortunate. Because it would have been cool to see, like, a good Kiko Alonso. Sure, that's a pretty memorable player for a lot of you Bills fans. And that is the game. The Buffalo Bills and Vince Lombardi are Super Bowl champions. Didn't take too long. We were really, really successful in this one. And that's because we had one of the greatest coaches in NFL history. But the thing is, didn't really win that many Lombardi trophies. Kind of bizarre. Not that many Super Bowls. 
You'd think for one of the greatest coaches, he'd have more Super Bowls. And, you know, come to think of it, it's a little bizarre that Cy Young, apparently one of the greatest pitchers in MLB history, has never won the Cy Young Award. You'd think that if he was so great, he would have at least won a Cy Young Award, which means you're the best pitcher in the league that year, pretty much. So, just things that keep me up at night, you know? A little bizarre. But, that is going to do it for the video. We built a very good team. Oh, look at that play of the game. It's a big touchdown by CJ Spiller. Uh, that's going to do it, though. Thanks, you guys, so much for watching. More of these to come because I'm, I'm really enjoying them. And uh, I will see you in the next one. Take it easy.